Uh, we're going to show you an interview I did with one of my former teammates who does not have small biceps. He has huge biceps. Uh, you know him. His name is Michael Orr, and you might know him from playing football, but uh, everybody else in the world knows him because he was the subject of the movie The Blind Side, starring Sandra Bullock. And I still think it's true today that at some point during uh, any, any minute of, of every single day, the blind side is being showed on some network. But Mike and I had a great talk uh, about, about life and particularly about education. Here it is. All right. Now we are joined by one of my all-time favorite teammates and people in the entire world, Michael Orr. Michael Orr and I were teammates in Baltimore. Uh, when I went to Baltimore, I was going into my 12th season. And I'd heard that we drafted this rookie and there was like a movie about him, first rounder. There was this big deal. And I thought, man, I can't wait to get my hands on this rookie and uh, and and make him carry my shoulder pads and, and beat some sense into him. But, uh, Mike, thank you so much for joining us. How you doing, man? I'm doing great. Thanks for having me. I appreciate it. Glad to be on. Yeah, so, all right, so I got to ask you a couple things here. Uh, one, how many pull-ups can you do right now? Right now, I can do 10, but they're not clean. I'm all over the place, man. I'm looking like a CrossFit guy, you know, pulling <laughs> up. <laughs> but, you guys, yeah, this guy is one of the most competitive people I've ever met, and I'm competitive. And this, this is why I respected Mike I, for a lot of reasons, but right out of the gate, I always prided myself on getting to the facility first in the morning because I was a low-talent guy, and I was like, well, it doesn't take any talent to be first. So my whole career, I'd get there like, I'm going to say, I, I can't remember what time. He's maybe like 6.45, 7 at the latest, right? Yeah. So first day I pull in, and there's this car in the parking lot. And I'm like, who's here? And I walk in, and it's it's Mike. And I'm like, dang, this guy's a first rounder and, you know, super talented. <laughs> he beat me here. So it was like 6.45. So the next day, I'm going to get there like 6.40. I get there at 6.40. Mike's there. I get there at 6.35. Mike's here. You beat me to the facility every single day. And one day I get there, and I, I beat you. I beat you. And like five <laughs> minutes later, you come running in the door and you're like, my alarm didn't go off. My alarm didn't go off. And, but I, I beat you to the facility one time in four years, Mike. You were like, I don't I think you slept in the locker room. That's what they always said, man. And then one time I actually let you beat me because I was kind of embarrassed. Man, you get sometimes you get embarrassed <laughs> for working out. But I'm like, hold on, let me these guys might think I'm playing around a little bit, man. <laughs> oh, so, man. No, it was great, man. That's where we come from. That's uh, that's the environment that I, you know, had to uh, be in, you know, to compete for everything uh, yeah. when you got that background. So, you know, I've always earned everything that I've, you know, got till this day. And, uh, you know, my thing is, you know, never letting anyone down. So, you know, I wanted to, even though I was, a, you know, recruited, had all this stuff going you know, I still had to work and I still had people depending on me. And, uh, you know, that was my only goal was not to let anyone down. So, well, I guarantee everybody that had the privilege to call you a teammate uh, respects the heck out of you for for your work ethic and and for your character. Uh, I hope you know that. I'm, I'm sure you do, but uh, I want to sure. make sure you know that. I appreciate it. Um, I appreciate it. So. So listen, I mean, I think everybody kind of knows the general arc of of, of your story. Um but to, I, I want to talk about education with you. I mean, Mike. I mean, talk about for someone like you, where you came from, what you've accomplished. How, what, what role did education play, and, and, and why is it why is it so important to you still today? Well, the thing about education was is for me the most important thing because sports wasn't it wasn't the thing that started this journey for me. Uh, you know, I had to get myself up second, third grade to go to school on my own, even long before uh, sports. I was waking myself up as an eight, nine year old kid and going to school. And I had to do that for years, uh, even before I started playing football in the eighth grade. And for me, you know, education was the most important thing. And, you know, for everyone, if you don't know me, even when I was growing up in poverty, I always was a little bit different and wanted to be different. And I contributed that to, you know, one I, one reason I had to go to school because I didn't have, I didn't have a home a lot of the times and I wasn't going to have a meal. So, you know, I had to start going to school to even, you know, have a safe place to, to be. So I started that 
trend. You know, woke myself up every morning starting in second, third grade to uh, go to school. So that formed something in my mind. Even I was just going to school. And, you know, where I'm from, what I've learned now, if you don't have uh, the resources in the education part by second grade, you're a lost cause mm. when uh, uh, you get older as you go, years go on. You know, basically they say eight is too eight. So I'm going to tell you the importance of that. You know, I got to Briarcrest at 16 years old, the school that I graduated from, the high school. And coming, being 16, we, you know, we did all the tests and things like that. And they told me I was never going to be able to learn on a regular grade scale. And the kids had already passed me up. And it was education was going basically going to be a waste of time. And I had all these mental disabilities and I, that's what they were t- saying on paper. And for me, they didn't know the kind of person I was. I've always wanted to be different. I've always been a competitor, as you said early on. And, you know, when it started off my sophomore, I was last every time the report cards came out. Uh, I'd ask a classmate how they did. And I knew where I stood and it was going to be last every time. Mm-hmm. And um, as we went on, the competitive nature in me, wanting to be different, wanting to set myself apart. Um, I competed every single day, you know, in that classroom. And I saw from firsthand experience every day how I was changing mentally, uh, physically I was changing, the aura was changing. And, you know, by the time I graduated, by the time I got to my senior year, I had passed up half those kids on the grading scale on their report card. Uh, the g- report grading scale, uh, and they had been in private schools all their life. And, you know, that that was probably the most proudest moment for me uh, was passing those kids up uh, on that uh, grade scale and graduating and then going down to Oxford, you know, being on the dean's list. Um, you know, I made the dean's list in, at, at Ole Miss. And, you know, it's that's why I preach it every single day. I think, you know, with – even for me, my goal was to have three or four jobs, not sports. And I knew education and I knew going to school and doing the right thing for me. Uh, that was the most important thing uh, to me in life. It, it was, you know, getting that education. And I still preach that. And I think, you know, every day, um, especially, you know, I just had to, I preach this. If I'm arguing with anybody, I preach this. And I had to, they were my brother last week, and it goes back to uh, not being education, not being educated on health, and not, you know, starting, you know, in that school and going up and being able to go off and do something other than sports. You know, I think it starts there um, w- before anything else. I mean, Mike, you're 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 definitely you are different. I mean, in a lot of ways. I mean, I mean the discipline and you know, kind of against all odds. I mean, what you've done, but you know, what, what, what was interesting to me when, what you were just talking about is, you know, you were 16 years old, you go into this private school environment and, and they thought that, um, you know, it, it was like, that it was too late for you, <laughs> yeah. but, and, and, and obviously less than ideal, right. To be, you know, 16 years old and be behind to be last in your class. But Jeez. I think what, what I, and again, that it's a credit to you, but also if you put a kid in the right environment, you know, I mean, even if it's oh, 16, it's late. no, it's 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 not like if, if the kid is if, if you put kids in the right types of environments for them, they can they can excel. They can they, they, they can succeed. And um, I mean, obviously, I mean, it's it's very your story is very inspiring. But that's I also think. It, it, yeah, that's that's the, thing, that's the thing with uh, with that. You know, you you label young people dumb. You know, I was labeled dumb, basically. And if you look up dumb, it doesn't mean it dumb means mute and you can't speak on something. So if those resources and those opportunities haven't been provided in front of you, of course, I can't speak on that stuff because I don't know it. Mm-hmm. That's the definition of dumb. So yeah. uh, it, we've been using that word. And I one of the words I hate more than anything. And I've made sure. You know, as I go, you know, through my sports career and uh, everything, I, I mean, that's one of the words I've hated the most. And I've tried to, 
you know, I read, I try to learn, you know, because that's something, you know, it, it, it's obviously it was with me early on, but, um, uh, you know, those, those are things that I've tr- I tried to uh, get away from. And, uh, yeah. you know, th- those are the things that, you know, you can't, though, like I said, those resources aren't available for you. You can't speak on it. Right. Right. Oh well, yeah. And I think anybody that knows you or spends two minutes with you knows you're not dumb. I want you to, I want you to tell the people here about what you're working on now with your, with your, with your school project, because yeah, it's easy to sit here and say, you know, once you play in the NFL, yeah, Hey, education's important, but, but, but you're you're walking the walk and you're you're doing something about it. Of course, you know right now my end goal uh, in the next couple of years to be opening a school uh, for disadvantaged kids, kids like Michael or myself uh, who don't have like I was talking about those resources and those opportunities. And you know, I obviously I was given a great platform, and there's so many other kids you know who are out there. Um, like me who are familiar with my story and are motivated. So, you know, that that's the importance of uh, what I'm trying to do right now, you know, through encouragement programs, through my foundation, mentorship programs. And like I said, putting those uh, things and, you know, sparking minds and taking them out from their environment that they're in and taking them to, you know, those other environments where, you know, they can see something different because of, and, uh, and I, you know, in reality, those are the things that really sparked my mind going out and seeing these other places, these other schools and being out there with people from uh, other cultures and other backgrounds who weren't like me. So that motivated me. Hey, if they can, you know, they can do it. I can do it. You know, yeah. I belong here as well. You know, we have the same mind. You know, I just need a little bit of toning up. So, mm-hmm. you know, those are the things that I can remember the day when I said, man, I'm not going back. I want to be in this environment every single day. And the joy when I first got that first A on that quiz, that first A on that test, it was really, uh, I got a a high from it. I can't explain. It was like pancaking somebody on the field or something. You know, you know how tough that is in uh, the NFL, you know, getting that. So those are the things that I'm trying to implement through my foundation, through the programs that I'm creating and the curriculum I want to eventually put into my school and other schools um, to, you know, give them that confidence and, you know, start putting these things into their mind and telling them, hey, you know, this is what you, if you can do this every day, this is going to be on your portfolio when 10 years from now, 108 months, uh, you know, this that 10 years is 108 months. So we put got to put it in that you put this in there, you know, in your portfolio every single day we are stacking these up. And you're transforming that mind. So it's a bunch, uh, you know, into it. But, you know, just transforming those, you know, minds. And, you know, it, because obviously time, it's moving fast now. And nobody has the, uh, it's moving. So nobody has time to even sit down for a minute to, you know, yeah. go try to, you know, get something done. So just trying to do it you know, on, a, on, a, on a larger scale, a different kind of scale, and uh, just making it happen. Yeah, well, that's awesome, man. I mean, I know just your your story alone, Mike, has inspired millions of people. Um, you know, I mean, but people, of course, they always ask me, "Oh, you play with Michael Orr?" And <laughs> I say, "Yeah." No, I was tell them, I was, I was telling what kind of person you are. I was to say, you're, "You're, you're, you're the toughest guy I ever played with." You're always the one starting the fights after the play, getting, getting <laughs> the, you know, kind of making. I mean, I was like, I was like, you know, I was like the old dog at that time. I don't want to, I don't want to do any extracurricular activities. No you were, you were the young pup, always trying to get people place. going. Uh, but you're, you, you're an awesome teammate, but Mike, you're an awesome dude. I mean, you, yeah, I, I know this, but I love to see what you're doing now after football. Um, I mean, taking, I mean, easy for you to just ride off in the sunset and be Michael Orr, but, um, I'm going to tell, tell you how important education is, you know, Matt, you know, of course he went to Harvard, smart guy, the Mississippi yeah. of the Northeast. We call it the Mississippi of the Northeast. No, we're the Harvard of the South down in Oxford. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you're the Harvard of you're the Harvard of Mississippi. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> hey, but you know, first first second year, everybody on the offensive line, man. We had Bert. Nobody had to study their playbook. Matt knew every call, every call. We knew we didn't have to study a single thing, man. I'm like second third year we're in. I'm like, I used to tell you, I'm man. I when you leave. 
I don't know what I'm going to do. I'm going to have to retire. <laughs> this is going to be terrible for me. You know, I'm going to have to open a playbook. You know, what am I, what am I going to do? You know, oh, man. that's what I mean. You know what? That's that's, I, man, we used to laugh so hard together. That's probably, it's probably what I miss the most, man. You know, that grind and then just, just laughing like this. That's you, it. Every day I had a joke, a, 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 a terrible joke that today ought to start the day off. <laughs> <laughs> it was, it was great. It was oh my great. gosh. Well, I hope hey, next year, next year's the 10 year anniversary of us winning the Super Bowl. I would assume the Ravens are going to have us back and we're going to do something and, and we can get with the other guys and, and, uh, and, and laugh like we used to, but, uh, no and, question. Uh, that's that's going to be awesome, man. Great times, great experience. I talked to Marshall the other day for about an hour. Uh, he's doing great. Um, but yeah, those are the times, man, you can't yeah. beat it, especially when you're around great people, hard work at hard nose blue collar guys who have great character. I think that's what it boils down to. Yeah. Uh, every, you know, you like putting in work and being around one another. Uh, it makes it easy. It makes it no easy, doubt. man. That's, that's that, that, that's the winning formula for success sure. in football, for building schools and, and for life. Um, hey Mike, I really appreciate you joining me and, uh, means a lot, man. Just, just always good to talk to you and, and see your face. And, uh, I'll, uh, I'll keep you updated on the campaign. You keep me updated on your school. We'll do it. Good luck to you. Keep doing what you're doing. Great things. Keep being who you are at the person is the most important. And that, you know, I brag about you all the time, you know, um, hopefully I don't meet any other Harvard people. So I can, you know, <laughs> you're the only one I brag on. You know? so, that's, a, that's the only reason I call you my friend. Cause you're a smart Harvard. Guy, you know? I'm just, I'm just kidding. <laughs> oh, Mike, awesome. you're the best man. All 